So while we were sleeping last night, Nick Bosa, fresh off the PJ in the Bay Area after signing that record-setting contract extension, making him the highest-paid non-quarterback in the history of football. The first words that we heard from Bosa after signing that deal, hey, faithful, I'm back, baby. Sorry for the scare. Let's win some games. If this photo and the thought of Bosa playing week one has you pumped up and you're excited that Bosa is going to be with this team at least for the next five years, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. And coming up on today's show, a couple of contract restructures yesterday for George Kittle and Trent Williams is another big move in store for the San Francisco 49ers. Let's explore it on today's show. Nick Bose is going to look clean in that Niners uniform in Pittsburgh on Sunday for the 49ers season opener. And if you want to look clean with some gear, Roan is the answer. 20% off if you use the code CHATSPORTS. We'll tell you more about Roan here coming up here in just a little while. So the topic of today's show is this. Is another big move coming down the pipeline for San Francisco? Because the Niners yesterday, it's kind of fell under the radar after the craziness of the Nick Bosa holdout turning into his contract extension. They cleared up about $23 million in cap space. So what is next for San Francisco? And what took place yesterday? George Kittle had his contract restructured. Trent Williams had his contract restructured, and the money freed up for this organization now, you see it here to my right, $23 million. Of course, there are nuances of this and to this that we're going to simplify, but what this usually means is that when the Niners go about business in this way, they convert the base salary for these players into a signing bonus. And these are the financial gymnastics that I've been talking about for a really long time that the 49ers have been able to use to their benefit and other teams across the National Football League also use at their disposal. As for specifically the George Kittle contract restructure, per over the cap, it saves the Niners $9.2 million in 2024, $8.8 million in 2025, and here in 2023, only $80,000. That's chump change when you talk about salary cap for teams in the NFL. And then for Trent Williams, $14.2 million in 2024 and in 2025. That's the same number there. And then $15.5 million in 2026. So if Bosa's salary does not go down this year, and remember that even though he signed this deal five years $170 million, $34 million per year. He was under contract because the Niners exercised his fifth-year option. That number was just under $18 million. They can finagle with that number. They can keep it the same. But if Bosa's salary stays there because this is the final year of his rookie contract, Right now, as of this recording, on this fine Thursday, San Francisco has about $13 million in cap space here in 2023. So is another big move coming down the road because $23 million in cap space is a lot. And there are a couple of moves that could take place for San Francisco here. Could it be a Brandon IU contract extension that they're clearing money up now to pay him later? Could they make a move for a player like Brian Burns? We're going to explore that here on today's show. First, though, make sure you subscribe to the channel. As you can see here to my right, 84,844 people worldwide are subscribed to the show. We're the largest independently run Niners channel here on YouTube. So far in September, we've picked up 800 new subscribers. The channel has been hot. I can't thank you enough for all of the support. And what you get if you hit that subscribe button, free content every single day with shows on the docket on a daily basis covering the San Francisco 49ers. We'll talk about those potential moves coming up here in just a moment. But I told you off the rip, I'm wearing this commuter shirt, thanks to our friends at Roan, and you can get 20% off if you use the promo code chat sports. Why I like Roan, they have clothing items for any occasion. You want to hit the golf course and rock a polo with some shorts? You can certainly do that. You want a dress shirt like this? Really nice pants? Roan has you covered. 
And I like the versatility to their products. I like the way that they look, but also the quality as well. And men's closets, they were due for a radical reinvention. Roan stepped up to the challenge. They've absolutely knocked it out of the park with the commuter collection. It offers you the most comfortable, breathable, flexible set of products known to man. And here's why. Roan helps you get ready for any occasion with the commuter collection because I love their pants. Dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. I love the versatility that they have to offer. Also, though, if you invest in these products, you're going to save money down the road. Why is that? Wrinkle release technology. So you, the more that you wear these shirts and these products, and the more that you even have them hanging up, because I've gone about it that way too, wrinkles disappear. So you don't have to worry about taking your clothing items to the dry cleaner any longer. The deal for the faithful is one that you don't want to miss out on because fall is here and winter is coming. You want to add to your wardrobe, right? 20% off your order at roan.com slash chat sports. That's 20% off your order at roan.com slash chat sports. We're going to put that link in the comment section. We're going to put it in the description of this video. And let me know down in the chat who looks better rocking this shirt, the model or this model? Have some fun with it down in the comment section here. So let's circle back to really the topic at hand for today's show. Niners clearing up those $23 million in cap space yesterday, and it was a really busy day for this front office given the money that they gave Nick Bosa, but then the contract restructures for George Kittle as well as Trent Williams. So what are the Niners up to here? A couple of different things that they could be thinking about here with these transactional moves. They could be freeing up money just for Nick Bosa, depending on the contract structure. And we're not sure what the fine details of the structure are. Is it going to be a front-loaded deal? Is it going to be a back-loaded deal? $50 million signing bonus for Nick Bosa as well. That plays a role in this conversation too. Could San Francisco be clearing up some money for Brandon Ayuk? More on that here in a moment. Or could the Niners be looking at this roster right now, canvassing some of the weaknesses on this team? Because they have a lot of quality players, a lot of premium players, pro bowlers, all pros, future Hall of Famers, but a couple of areas like offensive line and edge rusher as far as depth goes at edge rusher. Offensive line starters on that right side, somewhat questionable, where the Niners could look to address those positions via a trade as well. My read on this situation, I think the San Francisco 49ers are making some moves here to clear up some money for Brandon Ayuk down the pipe. And I think... What's going to happen this time next year? We're going to be talking about a potential Brandon IU contract extension. You look at the recent history for the Niners. This is an organization, to their credit, that has been willing to invest in their own homegrown players. They drafted George Kittle, Fred Warner, Debo Samuel, Nick Bosa, as well as Brandon Ayuk. And it's really important to keep these players as part of your core, especially as San Francisco is getting a little bit older. They remain in this championship window, but if you can replenish the cupboard to a certain degree and keep these young players around, it helps you remain competitive for the foreseeable future. And the recent history of the Niners here, they gave George Kittle the richest contract ever for a tight end at the time. They made Fred Warner the highest paid linebacker in the game. They gave a bag to Debo Samuel last summer. This year, they give Nick Bosa the highest contract for a non-quarterback in the history of the NFL, and I think that Brandon Ayuk could be up next. In 2024, Ayuk is set to make a fully guaranteed number of $14.1 million. It's that number because the Niners exercised his fifth-year option, the right that they had after he was a first-round pick back in 2020. And the benefit of an Ayuk extension before next year they could, San Francisco, lower that 2024 cap number to free up some money elsewhere to address some different positional needs on this Niners roster. And Brandon Ayuk is certainly deserving of a new contract extension. I think he's the best wide receiver on this team. Some people don't think so because it was Debo Samuel being named a team captain and not Brandon Ayuk. But when it comes to being an all-around wide receiver, footwork, route running, picking up yards after the catch, having reliable hands, being a threat from goal line to goal line, and being a polished wideout, I think Ayuk is better than Debo because I look at Debo as more of an all-around weapon. Now, of course, after the news broke that Nick Bosa signed that contract extension, a reporter went up to Ayuk and said, do you think you're next? And he said, quote, 
We'll see. We all know what comes with the game. If you play the game at a high level, you get to reap the benefits. And Ayuk knows that because all of the players that we just mentioned, George Kittle, Fred Warner, Debo Samuel, now Nick Bosa, they've played at a really high level for San Francisco, and they've gotten paid because of that. And Ayuk and his production has certainly been there to start his career. In 2020, drafted in that COVID year when there were limited training camp practices, no preseason games. It's difficult to master a complex scheme like Kyle Shanahan's when you're not seeing the practice field all that much. He also missed a couple of games as a rookie, still tallied 60 catches, 768 yards, and five touchdowns in his debut season coming out of Arizona State in 2021. Starts off the season in the doghouse, finishes it really strong, and started to emerge as a really legitimate weapon on this offense. 56 catches, catches 826 yards and five tutties once again. And then this past year, I thought Ayuk was the most slept on wide receiver going into the 2022 campaign. I said last offseason, I'd take him over C.D. Lamb. And we saw last year why that is the case. 78 catches, more than 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns, and he was consistently just turning around DBs like it was nothing with that clean footwork and that route running. And as we look ahead here, here are the highest paid wide receivers right now in the NFL. Could Brandon Ayuk, if he has an even better season in 2023 than what he put forward in 2022, crack this list of the top 10 highest paid wide receivers in the game? Tyreek Hill comes in at number one, Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Stephon Diggs. You have Ayuk's teammate, Debo Samuel, who's a top 10 wide receiver at $23.85 million per year. And if Ayuk puts up better numbers than Debo for the second consecutive year, does he have an argument to make even more than Debo, especially when you factor in that the NFL salary cap is going to continue to rise? So that's what I think San Francisco is planning here. A Brandon IU contract extension next offseason. And we'll probably be in the same scenario that we were in this offseason and last offseason and the offseason before that and the offseason before that, where there could be a potential holdout. There could be some stiff negotiations between the players camp and the Niners because that's how they do business. Other moves that the Niners could be thinking about here. Brian Burns trade. He wants to get paid. Now that Nick Bosa reset the market, is Carolina going to give Brian Burns somewhere in that T.J. Watt neighborhood, about $28 million per year? He has been a fantastic player ever since he came out of Florida State. That would be a move where if you pair up Brian Burns on the other side of Nick Bosa, it might give you the best edge rusher combo in the NFL. Chandler Jones is getting a little bit wonky with the Las Vegas Raiders. A lot of weird stuff going on on that front. The Raiders could cut him. They could trade him. Could San Francisco bring in the veteran who seems to be going through a little bit of a weird time right now? Daniel Hunter, he has made kind of his dissatisfaction with the Minnesota Vikings be known, but they were able to figure some things out after they redid his contract for this upcoming season. And then lastly, offensive line help. Spencer Burford, Colton McKivitz on the right side of this Niners offensive line. The weak spots along this offensive line. Trent Williams is the best left tackle in the game. Aaron Banks played at a Pro Bowl level last year. Um, Jake Brendel was a Pro Bowl alternate. The middle to left side of that line of scrimmage, it's pretty solid. But some questions do remain with the right side of that line of scrimmage. Could San Francisco trade for a future right tackle? All things to think about. All things will continue to monitor. We're just trying to allow you to become a Smarter Niners fan. A programming reminder. We're going live once again on Thursday today in just a few hours. The show gets underway around 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific. For those of you kicking it on the West Coast, subscribe. Turn on those notifications. Therefore, whenever we go live, whenever we push out a video, you will be notified. Thanks for tuning in and hit that sub button.